Welcome back to Bud Light Hog Talk, final segment on this week's show. Thanks again for uh, Andrew Allen and Brandon Svensson for joining us on the first two segments. Now we'll finish it off with Terry Broadhurst, Ice Hogs Wing. Let's give it up for Terry Broadhurst. <laughs> Terry, thanks for uh, coming on the show. Yeah, not a problem. Good to be here. Two and two on the, uh, on the road trip, come back and that, that tough loss at the BMO. Talk a little bit about uh, you know, just going on that trip and, and being with the boys. Yeah, you know, um, obviously it didn't start out the way we wanted it to, uh, losing a few games there, but uh, finished off on the right note. Besides that, everything away from the rink was good. Uh, it's nice to get away from home, especially being on a skid. It was nice for us to just get, uh, get together and be on our own, kind of like Svenny had talked about. Uh, a lot of bonding time. You don't really have much to do besides be with the guys, so it's good to kind of get away. Uh, it's obviously nice to be back home now, but for, for, for those few days, just to, uh, to get together with the guys and kind of refocus on hockey. Everyone seems to kind of have their own process of passing the time, card games, movies, watch some TV, listen to the music, whatever it may be. What does Terry Broadhurst like to do to pass the time? Uh, well, on the road, you know, you go to these cities that you probably don't get to go to very often, so uh, there's a few other guys that kind of think the same way. So kind of get out and see the city, walk around, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we were in San Antonio, they got a pretty nice river walk. You know, a lot of the guys walked around and did that. Um, at home, though, other than that, I don't know, yeah, it's probably the same as everybody else, watch, watch Netflix. Uh, I tried picking up guitar, not very good at it. You know, I'm still practicing every day, trying to get better at that. See, at but, least uh, most guys would, wouldn't admit that, though. Well, you know, I figured I'm going to have a lot of downtime this year. It's not like in school where you got to do homework. So I was like, I might as well pick it up. I've always wanted to play. So small stuff like that to keep your mind busy. It's got to be pretty interesting, too, when you go on some of these trips. Uh, San Antonio, obviously a beautiful city. Houston, a huge city. And then you go on, you know, Peoria. Cedar Park, <laughs> I believe, it's a, it's a suburb of Dallas, right? Yeah, yeah. So, right I mean, Austin. three really great Texas cities and then... Peoria. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a little different, but uh, it is what it is. You got to uh, make the adjustment. And, uh, you know, for us, they're obviously a rival for ours. And uh, to go down there, you're not really staying in the city, so it's nothing like that. And, uh, you know, it's a good classic hockey game. You're playing in an old stadium against a rival, so you know it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a hard fought battle, and uh, you got to make the most of it. And that's, that's what we like. That's fun for us. Going back to that shootout win uh, against Texas. We asked Svensson about it, obviously, a little bit. How big of it was it for you to get that 5-4 uh, that win? 11 rounds of the shootout. Have you been a part of a shootout that long? Uh, I don't think I have, and it was definitely getting nervous there for a minute. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, after the first period, you're thinking, uh, you know, here we go again. But it wasn't necessarily that. I thought, uh, obviously, it wasn't our best hockey, but we weren't playing bad. And everybody was on the same page in the locker room after that first, pe first period as far as, you know, we can come back in this game and win. And, we stuck to it. The guys played hard. Uh, we were able to force a shootout. Um, you know, Hank, Hank did great in the shootout for us. We were able to win 11 rounds. So uh, it's definitely much needed, and it was, uh, it was great that we got that win and the road trip the right way. Big game for you as well. Your first AHL professional goal. Was there any uh, hoopla about the goal, and what did you do with the puck? Uh, yeah, you know, it was nice to get it. Definitely uh, makes you relax a little bit when you get the first one out of the way. Um, as far as the puck goes, you know, the... I don't know who grabbed it. I think maybe uh, Ryan Stan grabbed it and gave it to the training staff, and they taped it up and wrote the date and uh, the team we played on. So that was pretty cool. Gave it to nice. me after the game. And uh, it's just sitting at home now. You know, I'll probably give it to my parents this summer, and they can do what they want with it. They're more into that stuff than I am right <laughs> now. You know, like when you're a hockey player playing, yeah, don't really have time to enjoy that type of stuff. But after your career, you can look back on it and enjoy it then. You also had an assist in that game for your first multi-point game, followed it up with two assists against Peoria. So back-to-back -back multi point games. You were uh, you were named our hot hog this week. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. There well, you that's, go. that's gotta be a good thing. Breaking right? news. <laughs> Give it up for the hot hog. It's Terry Broadhurst, all right. And you won two out of three games, so I'm sure you're yeah, pretty happy. So, yeah, so yeah, it was a good weekend. Um, you know, it's good to get on the score sheet. That's definitely part of my game. Uh, obviously being a first year guy, uh, Still learning the ropes, you know, figuring my way around the league and around the, uh, around the team and what I need to do to be successful. So it's, uh, it's good for me, for my confidence to, uh, to get on the score sheet and be able to make plays and contribute to the team that way. And I uh, just have to continue to do it. The, uh, the rookie status lingers with you. And we got a question on uh, Twitter from Nick. Said, uh, ask Terry what rookie duties he's had, if any, and if his teammates did anything special for the first goal. Uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't do, give you anything special for the first goal because I probably said why it took so long. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, as far as rookie duties, it hasn't been anything too crazy. The guys on the team are pretty good. It's pretty standard, you know, picking up pucks after, uh, after practice, cleaning the bus after road trips. That's, that's probably the worst one. The guys seem to like to leave the, the bus a little more messy when they know the rookies are cleaning it <laughs> rather course. than somebody else. But, you know, that's how it goes. Everybody goes through it and kind of, uh, kind of makes you bond into the team a little bit. You know, the guys uh, that have been here have gone through it, so you go through it and it makes you a little bit closer. It's kind of a, a big thing for a rookie. Obviously, it's not anything that you want to do, but you kind of gain that respect if you just shut your mouth and do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you don't want to be a guy who's complaining about it because, right. you know, 
the guys have been through it. They've seen rookies complain about it, and they know they know how that goes. So you just got to put your head down, kind of deal with it, you know, get through it, and then uh, realize it's only one year out of your hockey career. So it is what it is. That uh, that game you had in Peoria, a solid two assist effort, and the team got the win. Now you play them three times in twelve days. Is it tough playing the same opponent so frequently? Yeah, definitely, because they pick up on your tendencies. It's a little different when uh, you don't see a team for a while. You know, you don't have to uh, necessarily adjust so much. But uh, when you're playing a team that often, there's definitely going to be a lot of coaching involved. They're obviously going to be watching tape on us. We'll be watching tape on them. So uh, as far as that goes, that's that's kind of tough. And then, you know, you're seeing the same guys all the time. So I'm sure it's going to get pretty heated being a rivalry already. But uh, this time of year, it's good to be playing those type of games. Is there a player in the NHL maybe that you would compare your game to or, or you strive to be like? Well, that's that's a tough question. Current or present? I guess uh, in the past present. I've Current had people past. say um, maybe maybe like Danny Briere on Philadelphia. I play a little okay. bit like him, but uh, to strive to be like one, I know we're in the Blackhawks organization. This is almost blasphemy to say, but Pavel Datsuk in Detroit. I think anybody who plays a game uh, can say they want to play like him. He plays the game the right way, almost like Jonathan Taze in Chicago. You know, defensively, offensively, he gets the job done every yeah, which way he can. Both great two-way players. Exactly. So uh, for any hockey player in any organization, those, those are the type of players you want to be because those, those are the type of players that stick around and uh, play at that elite level for a long period of the career. Did you see the goal Datsuk scored against the Kings? Yeah, it was, wasn't too shabby. He's, he's, he's got some, some nice hands. He also got murdered by Drew Doughty the shift before that. I yeah, think. I saw that this morning. We were watching uh, NHL Network. I was, they didn't show that one as on. often as they showed the goal. You know? <laughs> right. Well, either way, both solid efforts from both yeah. high-quality NHL players. Absolutely. Now, you're a local kid. Uh, Chicago local kid, I guess. Orland Park, suburb of, uh, of Chicago. It's got other Orland Park people in the yeah. building, all right. Uh, so you grew up a Blackhawks fan? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, kind of how we got into the game. Um, you know, my, my dad didn't really have much of a hockey background. Grew up playing on ponds and stuff. Uh, I kind of just fell into it. And then um, the Hawks in the early 90s were obviously a great team. Uh, Jeremy Roenick, Chris Chelios, Ed Belfour. So that kind of brought us into the game. You know, going to games when we were younger, um, at that point, it's not like they do now. They're very uh, involved in youth hockey, but there was some stuff they were involved with youth hockey. So, uh, you know, for uh, us as young kids to kind of relate to the players, get to see them face-to-face -face definitely helped. And, uh, you know, obviously um, they never won a cup. They lost to Pittsburgh there in, uh, I think it was 92. 94. 94, was it? No, I think it's 92. you got to look that up. You might be right, yeah. But, it's uh, one or the other. <laughs> He'll probably win. But, yeah, definitely. Um, that definitely uh, helped my brother and I get into the game for sure. It's You don't see – Kids come out of Chicago playing hockey very often. I mean, in the city especially, there's no public league teams. There's you got the Catholic League hockey, but in the suburbs especially, I mean, you don't really see the youth leagues and, and stuff like that as often as you would, obviously, in a Canada or a Minnesota. Ah, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. Um, Chicago does produce a lot of a lot of good hockey players. Uh, I kind of look at it from the USHL, United States Hockey League, a junior league in uh, in the United States, and um, you know, the last few years, Illinois has been. Uh, three and four as far as producing players right behind uh, Minnesota and Michigan. So, um, you know, there's obviously not high school hockey like it is in Minnesota, but uh, the AAA organizations are very strong. And uh, in the past, probably not as not as strong as uh, other places, but it's definitely getting there. And uh, obviously with the Hawks' success and their uh, reemergence, uh, you know, being able to win the Stanley Cup, and then what they do through the community is uh, getting more and more kids involved in the game. So how did you get involved? How did you first start playing? Obviously, you're a Hawks fan, so you're watching the games you want to play. What's the kind of process of you going from kid in Orland Park to playing for the Rockford Ice Sox? You know what? It's, that's, that's probably the hardest thing is just get involved. Once you get in the door, then everything seems to map its way out. But uh, for us, it was just kind of a fluke thing. I started you know, running around with a stick in the, in the basement. And, uh, a guy my grandfather worked with uh, was coaching a team his kid was playing on. We were the same age, and he said, you know, bring him out. I started playing for that team, and then the rest is history. Just kind of stayed in that organization and then moved my way up and eventually started playing AAA hockey and uh, played uh, junior hockey in USHL in college and now here. So you played at college at Nebraska Omaha. Obviously, they're still a very quality team. Last time, I think today rankings came out, they were number 16. But uh, a tough weekend for them. I know you still keep tabs on them. North Dakota now, I guess, the biggest rival for, for them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's been our big rival the last few years. And... Uh, Definitely a tough series to lose. I know they had a special outdoor game uh, in the new uh, College World Series baseball field there in Omaha. So uh, the guys are pretty pumped going into the weekend about it. I talked to a few of them, but after the losses, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow. But it's a quality team. From what I hear, they played pretty well. Um, not the results they wanted, but that's how hockey goes sometimes. 
you were undrafted and then signed by the Blackhawks, the team that you grew up loving. How, how amazing was that for you to, to kind of get that phone call or have that whole thing work out? Yeah, you know, it was, it was a dream come true. A um, bit of a process. I, uh, I'd gone to their development camp uh, after my freshman year, my sophomore year. So uh, going into my junior year, I kind of thought, you know, if I had a good season, they'd be one of the teams that uh, I'd have, a, have an opportunity to sign with. And, uh, you know, once I decided after my, uh, my college season that I wanted to leave, they were one of the first teams to call. So... It's kind of a no-brainer for me, especially with my little brother being drafted there. Um, right. You know, they, they kind of took care of me. They brought me to a game um, before I signed and had a jersey and everything. So it was, a, it was a great experience for me and a great experience for my parents. They were probably more happy about it than me, you know, for them. All the, uh, <laughs> all the sacrifice, all the money they spent to kind of see it uh, starting to pay off. It's, uh, it's a pretty good feeling. I'm sure the Broadhurst uh, parents are quite happy. Obviously, you now playing with the Ice Hogs and your brother drafted by the Blackhawks. He's up in London now. And if, last time I looked, I think he's tearing it up. Yeah, uh, they got a pretty good team. I think they won like 25 in a row at one wow. point in the season this year. Yeah, so he's been pretty fortunate enough to go there. Um, the Blackhawks were were great with that as far as letting him go there. They thought that would be a good decision, and uh, he's done a good job there, and uh, he's fit in really well. So it's been good for him all around. How was your experience in Nebraska Omaha? How did that come about? You know, were you recruited there, or, or how did you choose to play there? Yeah, you know, to be honest, it wasn't one of the first first choice I had uh, a few of the schools I was planning on going to things kind of fell through at the last minute and uh, Nebraska Omaha was always always talking to me they never never left me alone so um, after things kind of fell through with other schools I decided to go there and it was a great decision uh, you know you think Omaha Nebraska you don't think much you think of cattle country right, right? but uh, the city's actually pretty good it's a lot of fun uh, a lot of people there the school was great uh, the guys I played with were fantastic the coaches were great so uh, couldn't ask for anything more. Your brother was initially supposed to go play there too as well, right? Yeah, yeah, he was uh, supposed to come but decided to go play in London. I think everything's working out for him okay. Right <laughs> yeah, so yeah, far. I don't think he's complaining about it. So. Uh, so how, how closely do you pay attention to Nebraska Omaha and do you get a chance to watch games or do you just kind of keep up with the, with the results? Uh, it's tough to watch games because they play on Friday and Saturdays like we usually do. But, uh, you know, a lot, of my, uh, a lot of my good friends are still there. So I talk to them, you know, every few weeks and uh, I always check the scores, see how they're doing. Obviously, uh, Whenever you spend a good amount of time in a place, it always has, has a spot in your heart. So, uh, you know, I keep tabs on it and obviously hope they do good and be successful. North Dakota, maybe the current rival, but you mentioned that the previous big rival was Michigan. And <laughs> yeah. you're not a big Michigan fan, are you? No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're going to bring this up, really you're going to get me a little frustrated here. But uh, a few I years apologize. ago, yeah, my sophomore year, we played him in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament and... Uh, it had a bit of a controversial call against us. No goal, goal, who knows. It took about 15 minutes to f the rest to figure out, but uh, wound up going against us and knocks out of the NCAA tournament. So, Ouch. You know, I didn't like him before that, and then from that point on, it's a tough pill to swallow after you, especially seeing they go to the national championship. Thank God they didn't win. I agree with you there. I'm, I'm not a Michigan fan either. But, uh, you know, that was, that was definitely tough to see. Um, that's sometimes how it goes, but, yeah, I'm not, uh, you're not going to see me wearing yellow and blue anytime soon, that's for sure. <laughs> Any other Chicago teams that you're a big fan of? Bulls, White Sox, Cubs? Well, yeah, I've always loved the Bulls, obviously, Michael Jordan. Now that Derrick Rose is there, they have a, a good team again. But um, out of all the teams, probably the Chicago Cubs. I go to a lot of Cubs games in the offseason. A lot of I'm my sorry. friends are Cubs fans. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. It's, it's tough. It's been tough lately, too, you know. But now they got some new management in there, so hopefully they can turn it around. We'll see. They haven't won in four of your lifetimes. Yeah, you know what? This actually, is, five. This is, this is kind of funny. I actually have a life bet. With one of my friends who's an avid White Sox fan. Okay. And, you know, if I lose, I'll have to write it in my will. You know, I'm going to have to owe this guy $500. But it, the bet is happen? if they win before one of us pass away, he owes me $500. If not, I'll have to will him $500. Is this so. after the White Sox won the World Series in 05 that this bet came, came about? Yeah, it had to be like a year or two after that. Okay. But it was just kind of like him and I always bickering back and forth about, you know, Is your brother better. a Cubs fan or White Sox fan? He's a Cubs fan. He's not, like, I mean, we're neither, both of us aren't crazy about it, but, you know, to pick it's definitely the Cubs I'm probably a little more of a Cubs fan than he is but how about the Bears oh yeah the Bears um obviously you know they got the new head coach uh hopefully that helps out the offense that's obviously you must watch a lot of sports point. center <laughs> the first thing <laughs> I is probably sound like an update. analyst up here right <laughs> yeah there you go Terry yeah, Broadhurst no. next uh, next NFL analyst on ESPN yeah well that's you know I people in Chicago and, and around the area that's what they talk about they want to see the offense obviously the defense has been great for a long time but um you know you got Jay Cutler there who's a good quarterback and he's making a lot of money you know you expect uh expect more of their offense than what's been uh, going on the last few years. So hopefully the new guy can help out. 
And Chicago, obviously, a great city, but when the sports teams are, are doing well and, and they're making those deep runs, the Blackhawks in 2010, the White Sox in 2005, even the Cubs in 03 before the whole Bartman thing yeah. happened, blah, blah, blah. Sorry to bring that up. But, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, when the sports teams are doing well in that city, it's just a fun place to be. Yeah, you know what? I think when the Hawks, Hawks won the Cup, and even before they won the Cup, when they were on that run, I've never seen a city like that. You could, you could ask anybody around that was, uh, that was around there. I can remember... Uh, being at a place watching uh, them play San Jose when they swept San Jose, and the place was crazy. And it was an afternoon game, and afterwards the streets, not even around uh, the United Center, were just crazy and red. And then obviously they win the cup, they have the big parade. Um, just awesome. The, the city definitely uh, definitely fell a part of that team. And uh, with them winning the cup, definitely helped out. You know, now it's, it's almost impossible to get tickets to a game, so that's good. Yeah, uh, but it's nice that you know, the UC is always packed, and it's a great crowd, and obviously that national anthem, it, to my, in my opinion, maybe the best tradition in, in pro sports. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's second to none, that's for sure. Well, Terry, thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thanks Three games this weekend, let's have six points. Yeah. All right, that's Terry Broadhurst, and that's all the time we've got for this week's edition of Bud Light Hog Talk right here at District Barn Grill. Tune in next week. We'll have Adam Clendenning, Matthew Boduan, and Ted Dent on the show. Thanks for watching on 23.2 Antenna TV. We'll see you next week.